What's up everyone, welcome to the Durbin Compound. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Devin Durbin. So on today's episode, we are going over front brake pad replacement, and we're also gonna replace the rotors on the Mercedes W205, uh, which is the C300 formatic with the sport brake package. So I'm gonna show you guys everything you need to know about doing this. We're going to do it on the passenger side where the sensor is, and I'm gonna show you all the tools, tips, and tricks to make you self-sufficient and get this job completed. So I hope you guys enjoy the video, stay tuned. All right, so obviously the first thing we need to do with this project is to remove the wheel. So we're gonna go ahead and I have loosened all these lug nuts or wheel fasteners while it was on the ground so that I could get them untorqued. Now we're gonna go ahead and take them all out here. We'll speed the video up for this. Okay, first thing we wanna do here is remove our brake pad sensor wire here. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take it completely off the caliper so that uh, we don't have to worry about the wire. So there's a little piece of metal here that uh, you need to get underneath with a dental pick or something like that. You can see it pop out and up around the little connector piece. Go ahead and pull this completely out and it looks like this. So uh, once you get that, disc or uh, don't discard it, but put it off to the side, and then you'll be able to wiggle the connector piece out of the bracket here. So after you've removed that, you can take a pair of pliers and remove it off the brake pad really quick. Um, we're going to put a new one in here, so I'm not worried about messing it up. So you can pry it straight out, just like so. And that allows you to uh, get that completely out of the way. There's this little metal clip that stayed with the brake pad. That's going to come on the new piece here. So let's go ahead and discard our sensor. We're not gonna be using that anymore. <clears throat> the next step is to drive these pins out. So if you see this metal pin that goes through here and there's uh, the uh, clip on it. I usually just use, uh, this is a four millimeter Allen key, but you can use just about anything on it. And you're just gonna drive these pins back towards the engine. Now, once you get them out, a little ways, you should be able to wiggle them out with your fingers. So you're gonna to have to take pressure off here uh, with your bracket here, and you should be able to wiggle them the rest of the way out. So if they give you a, a little bit of heartache, let's get in there better with them. Let's try the, first, let's try the bottom one slides right out like that. And then once you've got the pressure off here, you can take this all the way out and see the pin just slides out. So usually if you're having trouble with this pin, it's because of this bracket here that's not letting you uh, get to it, okay? So now we have our two pins off. This would be a good time to just wipe them down and uh, lube them up a little bit so they can go back in well. After you've removed that pin, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the brake pads out. A little flat head here uh, will allow you to pull the brake pads out. You just work, work them back and forth here. They slide right up and out. So uh, if you're struggling with it a little bit, just work it back and forth like you see me here doing. Uh, and then you can always Once you can get your other hand on it, it's a little easier. Um, if you're struggling with getting the, the flat hit in there, you can always put something like a wrench across here, give you a little bit more, a little bit more uh, prying room here. So you should be able to get them to a point where you can pull them out with your hands and just wobble them out. So there's the brake pad. Same thing with the inner side. You can pry from the back. Try not to 
get my light here. Let's pry them up out of place. Okay. Now there is a special tool that you can use if you're just doing brakes or just doing pads um, to spread the pistons back out because there's two pistons on this side and two pistons on this side and you need to spread you need to push them back in order to get the new thicker brake pads in their place. Okay, so there is a special tool that you can use for that, but I'm going to go ahead and remove the caliper because we are also doing the rotor. So right now I'm going to show you exactly how I take off the brake caliper. First, we'll take off this sensor, um, this uh, basically where the, the brake pad sensor plugs into. We're going to take that off so that this wire is not damaged when we plop this caliper down out of place. Now, this bolt on the back side, which I'll roll in a picture of here, is actually an E10, which is an external Torx, or you can also use a 5 16 If you use a 5 16 six-point socket, you can get it, um, but be careful with the sides of it because um, it is not the correct tool for the job. So if you have an external Torx, that's what you wanna use in this instance. Okay, so at this point, we are going to take off the two uh, bolts that bolt the caliper on. Now, although this is a German vehicle and it should be metric, the best socket that fits on these bolts is a 13 16 So the reason why you want these to fit nice and snug is because they are going to take a lot of torque to loosen. So what I do is I put the socket on there um, I use a, a, a half-inch drive 13 16 shallow socket. Now, I will put this on a big, long flex head ratchet so I can get around the corner of the caliper here and I can loosen, okay? Now, if you don't have a flex head ratchet or you are working with a standard 3 8 ratchet, something like this, what you need to do is take a a 3 8 drive ratchet, thir or a 3 8 drive socket, 13 16 And what you can do is you can put it on your bolt and then hit it with a hammer, okay, in the loosening position. So although it's hard to um, get a good viewpoint here from the outside of the rotor, um, you can hit down on this and it will loosen, uh, or no, you're gonna hit up on it because lefty loosey, righty tighty, the bolts are coming in this way. So uh, hitting it up is going to be loosening. So you can do it a, a, a couple different ways, whatever tool you have to get in there. That's what I recommend. So I'm gonna back you out here and show you just how I do it with the 13 16 on here. And then I take my long half inch ratchet and we'll go, we'll go ahead and get it in our socket here. And we are gonna loosen the bolt. <clears throat> All right, guys, so sorry my microphone uh, dropped out on me here, but uh, this is the point in the project where you don't need to run the bolts out with the ratchet. So these aluminum bolts uh, allow you to basically thread them out by hand by just taking a little bit of pressure off of the caliper. So uh, really simple here to just wiggle the caliper with one hand and to thread the bolts out. So they don't get a lot of corrosion on them, but the very end there, and I just spray them with some kind of lubrication. So in this case, I'm using WD-40 um, just to kind of clean them and keep them uh, from rusting. So uh, these are caliper hangers. Um, commonly used in the automotive industry. Just a piece of wire will do, a coat hanger, Anything that you can literally just hang the caliper on, I, I hook this over the uh, coil on the strut, and this will allow me to hang the caliper in the back there where uh, I take this off. So you can use something as simple as a wooden block set on the ground, and then just set the caliper on top of it. So um, this is just to make sure that you are not putting undue stress on the brake line. So just don't let these heavy calipers um, come off of uh, you know their bracket and then 
either fall onto or hang off of their brake line. So this is to cause undue stress on that brake line and give you problems in the future. So make sure you're holding it and then just swing it out of place here and hang it up on your wire. So uh, I'm fighting the light. I'm also trying to fight staying out of the camera so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So inevitably I drop the uh, hanger here and then uh, you know, have to rehang it back. Um, but I get it in the end here. Uh, next, we're going to talk about uh, spreading these uh, brake pistons. All right, so now that you've got the caliper hanging here and got it out of the way, you have your four pistons um, in here exposed two on the outside, two on the inside. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind is that a lot of the times uh, the old school way of pressing these uh, calipers in was with a C-clamp. Uh, so you would need a block of wood and you would need two C-clamps to do this because you need to depress both sets of these pistons at the same time. So think about it, this is all one big reservoir here. So as you were to push in one pin, the other piston would come out. Uh, same on the other side. If you push one in, one will come out. So you need to depress all four at once. Now, I have this caliper tool that simply slides into the caliper, and then as you ratchet it with the handle, it's going to uh, push out all four pistons at the exact same time. So obviously, I'm trying to do this with one hand here while I hold the caliper from moving so that it stays in the camera. And I'm trying to do all this basically one-handed for the camera here. So I struggle to get it in place a little bit here on uh, my own one-handed. But uh, once it, it, it is seated, basically all you need to do is ratchet this handle and it will pr press these uh, four pistons back into place. So now since I've got this tightened up, I'm going to go ahead and speed the video up and watch as the pistons are pressed back into place. Alright, now once you've got all the pistons uh, basically spread open to the part of uh, being fully seated in the caliper, you can spin out your tool and remove it. So it allows you to press in those brake pads and you see all of the pistons are flat with the body of the caliper. So this is a good time to spray this down with, uh, I use WD-40 in this case to, uh, you know, basically uh, get rid of any of my residue when it comes to the brake dust and just keep those uh, rubber grommets uh, lubricated and moist. Alright, so this is the point of the project where we're going to go ahead and replace the rotor. So of all of the things uh, up to this point, this is the easiest. There is a little pin here that is removed with a T30 Torx uh, bit. It is a small, short a uh, little pin that really just indexes this brake rotor. As you loosen it off, the brake rotor basically just falls down off the hub. So once you have this removed, it's a good time to go ahead and spray down and wipe down the hub to make sure you're getting rid of all that road grime and crap that's in there behind the rotor. So uh, I once again spray this all down with WD-40 so that I can lubricate, uh, get rid of any rust, uh, anything that's you know in the way and lubricate at the same time is just uh, easy to use. WD-40 does a great job at cleaning stuff, lubricating, rust prevention, so uh, it's not a bad product to spray on this. So a lot of times people use brake cleaner, it's very caustic, um, yes, it cleans parts really, really well, but it's so caustic, and then it just leaves a surface that's free of any oil, and then people wonder why uh, parts rust so bad. So these new Freemax uh, rotors from Auto House AZ are some really stout rotors. They're really heavy. Um, threading this in by hand uh, gets a little tricky because you're trying to hold these things in place and then uh, tighten it down. So literally just the reverse action here, thread the little T30 bolt back into place 
and it will index your rotor correctly. And after that, and after it's tight, we can put the caliper back on and uh, get this project wrapped up. So let's uh, go back over to the caliper and putting the brake pads back in. Okay, now that we've fitted our new rotor, uh, we are gonna go ahead and put our brake caliper back on with our 13 16 bolts. I'm gonna go ahead and lube them up here. I'm gonna lube up all my hardware. Let's go ahead and unhook the caliper. Be careful with our brake sensor wire. We're gonna slide it back down into place. Now this is where it might take some finesse. It's gonna take even more finesse from me because I'm trying to do this while the camera can still see. So I've got my hand through from the front trying to get this done. Okay. Once I have my uh, caliper tight, we are going to go ahead and really torque it down. Um, I don't know the exact torque specs on these bolts. Um, they're, they were extremely tight before, so we're going to get them about as tight as they were before. And be done with it here. This is obviously a critical braking component, so torque it down good. All right, now that we've got that done, we've got our pads ready to go in. Before we install our pads, I always like to put a little bit of uh, lubrication on. Here, sorry about the glare. Um, I use LubriPlate. You can use pretty much any uh, moly lithium grease. Uh, anything that's gonna hold up over time. Uh, this is just a, a uh, lithium paste. I go ahead and just take a dab on my finger like this. And we are gonna take the brake pads here, the new ones, and we are going to apply a little bit on uh, both sides of each brake pad. So hopefully this stays in focus here and stays in focus. We'll go ahead and slide the first caliper or the first brake pad into the caliper here. Boom, one, and then our outer pad will go ahead and lube up the corners here, the sides. Uh, these are your friction points. So it slides through the caliper. Go ahead and slide the next one in. Okay, so when you slide these in, they'll go all the way to the bottom of uh, the actual brake drum or the brake rotor. So what you want to do is you want to pull them out a little bit because then they're ready to accept these pins, okay? So if you push it down all the way in, the pin won't go in. So you have to pull them out just a little bit and then the pin will be able to slide through. So this is where you take your, your bracket that we had earlier, go ahead and slide it through and then all the way through the outer pad and then we are ready to put on the bottom. You'll take your thumb here and push the pin back through. Okay, make sure you have it all the way through all the brake pads, or both brake pads. Um, sometimes you might need to bump it up a little bit, like I was saying, and then give it a little, give it a little love tap from the back to align it. Let's go ahead, and this might need to come out a little bit more. Just depends on what's going on here. Push it with the Push it with the uh, thumb and then, okay. So after you have it uh, all the way in, you need to seat these pins. I just wipe off this excess grease with my finger here and get it up out of the way. Wipe it off on your rag. Now let's go ahead and seat these pins. All right. So I just used a little three pound hammer to seat these pins. Um, you can use a wrench here, the head of the wrench, and then hit the head of the wrench to get it completely, uh, uh, completely seated. Now we're gonna take our, remember, our uh, brake pad sensor. I'm gonna put our E10 bolt back in it here. 
and then we are going to slip the new sensor into place. Let's go ahead and get this tightened back in here. Okay, so now we have our new sensor here. We're gonna go ahead and slide it back into our brake, or our brake pad. Uh, now, these brake pads have a uh, port for it on the inside pad or the outside pad. It is completely up to you whether you wanna do the inside or the outside. So, uh, generally the inside pad wears faster than the outside pad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my sensor on the inside pad. So just make sure it lines up with the hole and then you can seat it like so. Now we just take our wire, turn it around and boom right into our connector. So go ahead and pull that wire off there a little bit. Now remember our little, uh, remember our little hairpin piece here. I'm gonna just go ahead and slide it back in the connector here, slide it back in and down on top of where the connector goes in. Let's go ahead and pop it over the edge and seat it right where it's supposed to be. Okay, now, and then you can pull out your connector and make sure that it does work. So we are all wrapped up here. So. Let's go ahead and remove our equipment like our, our uh, hanger here for the caliper and let's put it all back together. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, if you're looking for exactly where I got these uh, brake pads and brake rotors, I got them from Auto House AZ. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, I think that's all I have to say about it. Take your time, uh, do it right, keep your components clean when you take them off, and make sure that you've got all your stuff out from underneath the car uh, before completing the project. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give my video a thumbs up or thumbs down, whatever you guys are into, and we'll see you guys in the next video.